States. Now, it's going to be the same thing in reverse. So I expect that this economy will continue to chug along on false money until uh, uh, December or so, maybe into January. Then, then the plug will be pulled after the really powerful people have pulled their, their money out of the uh, Ponzi scheme and will be held uh, holding the thing. So I don't know how to insulate against it. I mean, I could say buy gold and I wouldn't be lying to you. I've, you know, I've told you to buy from Swiss America for years. He is an advertiser. The fact is, is yes. I mean, what else are you going to do to hedge your money? Buy, buy a wheat farm in Saskatchewan? Maybe. Maybe not a bad idea. The Chinese are doing it. The Chinese are buying up the Chicago Stock Exchange. They're buying our farmland in the Midwest. What a great nation this is, isn't it? What sane nation on earth sells its own breadbasket to a foreign nation that's not exactly friendly to us? Tell me what sane nation has no laws to stop this. It's called wildcat capitalism. Back in a minute. sick and tired of people who say that if you debate and you disagree with this administration somehow you're not patriotic and we should stand up and say we are Americans and we have a right to debate and disagree with any administration can you imagine eight years of that nervous breakdowns across America sales of Prozac through the roof suicides at an all-time high can you imagine having a shrike as president just what the doctor ordered. She's liable to intimidate Russia, though, I'll tell you that. If I were Putin, I'd back down if I had her screaming at me. I'll tell you the truth. Who knows? Maybe it'd be good for us to have a shrike in the White House. Unbelievable. Oh, God. I mean, Rachel Madcow embracing her last night after the debate was a, well, a real topper for me. Have you ever seen a moderator embrace the two people they just moderated? She was so in love with the two commies that she couldn't wait to hug both of them. And Bernie with the teeth... What a pair of choppers on Bernie. He looks like Dustin Hoffman playing Bernie Madoff. In other words, if you were to cast Dustin Hoffman to play D Bernie Madoff, it would look like Bernie Sanders or something like that. Sea lion. Did you hear about this one? Video of sickly pup in restaurant. What is that about? A sea lion sat herself in a restaurant in San Diego? I wonder what she tipped. The question is, are they good tippers? That's all that really matters. I guarantee you better than some customers. Okay, let's go to some callers on the Savage Nation. We'll have some rock and roll in the next hour, then more on the program. Food, news, views, reviews, Zika, uh, Clinton and Sanders open up about spirituality. That was a great one from the other day. And she didn't answer that. You know, the one part of the debate last night was releasing paid speech transcripts. I like that one. When she was asked whether she would be willing to release the transcripts from her paid speeches to Goldman Sachs and other organizations, she did what she does best. She dodged. I will look into it. I don't know the status. I'll certainly look into it. She received $675,000 for three speeches from this investment bank. Can you believe this? So how can you elect a person like this who is such a phony, that she takes money like that. She, would I? Of course I would. If I was invited to give speeches for that kind of money, of course I would. But that's not the point. She's running for office as an anti-Wall Street campaigner. That should end the story right there. Also, she's under the scrutiny of the FBI right now for her email scandal, in case you've forgotten it. And finger pointing at Colin Powell said he did it too. It means nothing. But I don't understand the mind of the progressive other than it's largely composed of people who don't think for themselves. Be here or be nowhere. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity, Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Come on, let's twist again. Clear 
watching last night's debate that the West is in a dance of death. A dance of death between an old communist and an old criminal, paralyzed by fear, refusing to ask the obvious questions about the so-called Muslim refugees, uh, whether they came from Afghanistan or Somalia or uh, uh, from Iraq or from Syria. Do you remember the rape episode? And we'll go back to the other topics in a, mi in a minute. Do you remember the rape episode, in, the rape episodes in Germany, especially in Cologne, where there was gang rapes and molestation of girls? And uh, an author in Russia has written an article on freepressers.com, What Has Happened to the West and Its Men, The Hypnotic Dance of Death. It's obvious he read my book, Government Zero, where I talk about the dance of death in the West. But he wrote a great essay on this and is called Cultural Totalitarianism of, of the Postmodern Era. He says it did the impossible. It changed the very nature of man. And he says, where were the German men while the women were being molested and raped by the Muslim refugees? And here's an interesting paragraph. For those of us who grew up in Soviet Russia, it would be inconceivable that some drunk young people could publicly mock and harass girls on New Year's Eve in the very center of Moscow or St. Petersburg. If they dared to do this, they wouldn't survive until the morning. They would become martyrs and would have had their way with 72 virgins in a completely different realm. Ethical codes embedded in us on a genetic level would demand that we intervene on behalf of the women, especially in a situation where normal adult men were more numerous than the rapists. And the rapists themselves were not terrorists, cyborgs, or aliens, but mere street punks. As it turned out in Germany, Sweden, Austria, these codes were fatally violated. A great number of strong, healthy men, having heard the girls screaming and crying, and having seen the crimes being committed, didn't do anything to save the victims. In rare cases, the girls were defended by migrants from Eastern Europe or third world countries. And he said, but this is only the first question in a long line of simple questions. We could expect that women, having learned about the abuse of girls the next day, would be in a fury. Since there is an inherent instinct in every normal woman to rescue a child or to protect a girl from an abuse, rape, or harass harassment. He writes this, again, genetic codes didn't work. Instead, we heard women blaming the victims and defending the Muslim rapists. We heard Henriette Recker, the mayor of Cologne, who claimed that there's always the possibility of keeping a certain distance of more than an arm's length. Or Claudia Roth from the Green Party, who accused an organized mob on the Internet of calling for a hunt of non-white people. We learned about dozens of female journalists who concealed the truth because the rapists were, quote, refugees. Feminists? We didn't hear their voices, as we haven't heard their voices in Sweden, Norway, and England, where thousands of girls had long ago been turned into nothing but meat in the streets. So it brings us to Hillary Clinton last night. Many women are under the false impression that if she is elected, she'll be a champion for women's rights. Nothing can be farther from the truth. She'll be a champion for Clinton rights, period, end of story. Why did Rachel Maddow, the tomboy of MSNBC, she's entitled to be who she is. Why did she, who poses as a feminist, who poses as a spokeswoman for women's issues, not raise one issue of the two socialist candidates last night about what happened to women New Year's Eve in Germany, and what that may mean for the West if the crazy man in the White House gets his way and brings in 100,000 or more Syrian Muslim men of military age to America. Why did that question not come up? Why is it not an issue? Answer, because there's a dance of death in the West, as I pointed out in my book, Government Zero. And that goes for every Republican debate as well. When have they talked about women's issues? When has the great Megyn Kelly brought up women's issues? Answer, never. Never. So you can blame uh, Mad Cow all you want, but the same goes for Megyn Kelly on the other side. Again, either they're in denial or they're in fear, but they won't bring up the obvious. And the obvious is what is being talked about by virtually only one candidate on both sides, and that's Donald Trump. He is the only one who has said he will ban the immigration of Muslim refugees until we, quote, figure this thing out. That's why he resonates with the average person. Because the average person understands crime, and they understand that crime is related 
to immigration in some cases, and they want that crime uh, diminished. They don't want it increased. The man writes this, if, quote, refugees ever dared to do the same thing in their home country, in Algeria, Iraq, Afghanistan, or Somalia, with Muslim girls, they would be buried alive. There are strict and oppressive laws of clan vengeance, and no one dares to harass a woman from another clan or tribe without bearing an inevitable cruel punishment. He said, but European women have no protection from their families or even the state, with the latter taking the side of the perpetrator. That is why they are doomed. Why are Western politicians paralyzed with fear? Well, again, why are our politicians paralyzed with fear? He says, I left the USSR as a hater of Soviet totalitarianism. Now I realize that the cultural totalitarianism of political correctness has turned out to be much more poisonous. The Soviet regime dictated harsh rules and established censorship. However, people remain normal human beings. They laughed at authorities, composed jokes about Brezhnev, made satirical films in spite of the censorship, and learned to read newspapers between the lines. This primarily referred to the intelligentsia. By the way, that still occurs here on the Savage Nation, which is why I'm so popular amongst uh, uh, emigres from Russia and from the Eastern Bloc. They know exactly where I'm coming from. Then he goes on and says, cultural totalitarianism succeeded much more. It affirmed a relentless self-censorship, <clears throat> turned people into sterile zombies, and exterminated basic senses of responsibility and dignity. It changed the very nature of man, and indeed it was a unique experiment on their own people. And he goes on. I don't want to read the rest of it. West, I'll conclude with this. Uh, Western elites have foredoomed their own people by means of somersaults and acrobatic tricks with the same fate of the unfortunate rabbit. The hypnotic dance of death is gaining momentum. That's from Alexander Mastrovoy. And uh, I like the dance of death because it came from uh, my book, Government Zero. The rest is all his. It's very well written. It's beautiful. It's from freepressers.com. Now let's go to the callers on the Savage Nation about the uh, issue of Madoff, the issue of the meltdown of the housing market, which will happen again as sure as I'm sitting here. We got Clinton dodging the Wall Street transcript question. You should know that Clinton's son-in-law runs a hedge fund. Now, how in the world she can get away with debating and saying she's anti-Wall Street when her own son-in-law runs a hedge fund is a product of the liars who are the moderators on both sides of the aisle. Period. End of story. Mad Cow, who poses as a, you know, flaming radical feminist, didn't ask her one question about her son-in-law, did not ask her one question about the rape of Yazidi girls or the rape of European girls from Muslim immigrants or by Muslim immigrants, did she? No, not at all. So last night, uh, one of the moderators asked her about releasing transcripts of her paid speeches to Wall Street, and I think we should play clip seven now on the Savage Nation. Are you willing to release the transcripts of all your paid speeches? We do know through reporting that there were transcription services for all of those paid speeches. In the in full disclosure, would you release all of them? I will look into it. I don't know the status, but I will certainly look into it. But I can only repeat what is the fact that I spoke oh. to a lot of different groups with a lot of oh. different constituents, a lot of different Benito. kinds of members about issues that Benito. had to do with world affairs. I probably described more times than I can remember how stressful it was advising the president right. about yeah, going in other, after In other words, she's a liar at every level. So now she won't even release the speeches that she gave to Wall Street, which she says were you know, innocuous and she was lecturing them. She was not doing that. Why do you think they paid her that money? Why would they pay someone 200 grand a speech or something like that uh, unless they were going to get something in return? You think they needed to hear her talk? You think that they invited her for her sartorial uh, uh, excellence? They liked her pantsuits and they wanted her to model the, the latest in pantsuits for women of her age and size? I don't believe so. KSFO, Petri, welcome to the Savage Nation. 30 seconds or less, what topic is on your mind? Vikings in Sweden and Scandinavia and Finland and Norway, they are fighting back. And I've heard you say that about the where did the Vikings go. But in recent news in Stockholm with these insane Muslims that are attacking women with the sexual assaults, the Swede, the men have retaliated, but they've covered their masks, their faces with black masks. 
And so that's been reported as, oh, yes. And do you know what the media is calling them? They're calling them right-wingers or Nazis. 